Hey guys, so this is yet another update on my 3D printed ductic quad. What you just saw there was a super shaky test flight, but since it's kind of lifting off the ground now, I thought it was worth making another video about it. And so to recap, this is a side-by-side -side of the frames I've iterated through. I've upgraded to a 60 millimeter EDF coming from a 30 millimeter one. In my last video, I was using the fans you see on the right. They're simple rectangular profiles with a ton of fan gap. And so coming into this, my number one goal for this iteration was redesigning the fans uh, so it has more curves, less gap, and a better fit on the motors. I flirted with scaled versions of this rectangular design you see here, but in the end I ended up surface modeling this curved design. There's a YouTuber named Drew last video who mentioned ductic props. Um, I didn't know those were a thing, and so I looked them up online and based my model off of those. To make both clockwise and counterclockwise versions, I just mirrored the features, it was pretty easy. Printing them was pretty simple. Um, it's the same method I've been using with the supports on the bottom. As you can see here, my first designs were way too thin um, and this didn't really allow the printer to get all the detail I wanted out of it. You can see in these propellers, the trailing edges are not even there. Even after that, it did take me a while to dial in the temp speeds and layer heights to get the quality I wanted. And so since I'm really pushing the limits of the printer, I'm forced to rely on post-processing to get the fans to a reasonable precision and consistency. All this really means is that I sanded each fan pretty hard after they came out. Here, a post-process one is on the right and a freshly printed one is on the left. You can see that the trailing edge in particular um, is a lot more detailed on the post-process one. And even though the bottoms are kind of janky, you can see hopefully that the air profile still came out pretty well. In the last video, I talked about how the twisting force of the motor wore out the fan hubs pretty quickly. You can see the front left fan coming off pretty obviously. Um, and then you can also see the back right wobble as it deforms during this test. I designed the fan to fit on the motor casing this time instead of the axle, which has proven to be a lot more sturdy at the cost of a slightly decreased fan swept area. And like what I was saying before, the rectangular blades have a huge fan gap, something like a couple millimeters, making the duct basically useless. The biggest improvement for this revision is the way I handled the fan gap. This was inspired by a YouTuber named Chris who commented two videos ago. I oversized the fans so that there is still friction between the fans and the duct, which hopefully you can hear from these clips. I basically ran the fans for about two minutes each, which wore down the PLA for the fans and ducts until there was no more friction. Hopefully you can hear the progression to the point where the fans are just spinning and not coming in contact with the ducts anymore. You can see here that the fans were wearing down the ducts a little. And so I had to make sure to mark the fans and the ducts to match them up. And so all of this resulted in a fan duct gap I was super happy with. The gap is now something on the order of a tenth of a mil. Compared to my previous design, I think it's safe to say that the ducts are now a lot more useful in suppressing the blade vortices now. Again, looking back on it, I don't think this rectangular blade system was anything more than just a spinning fan. The ducts really weren't doing anything. So I set everything up in this VDB app. This allowed me to adjust the PI gains, which I'll go over at the end of the video but the SpeedyB app makes everything really easy. This final weight came in at 268 grams, pretty much the same as my last iteration. It's not bad for a 4S setup. And so here are some testing clips. You can see me hiding behind the seat. I was low-key terrified of the rotor fan blades spinning off at these RPMs, but you can tell that it has more than enough power to take off now. I don't think I ever push it beyond 30% throttle. It's just super unbalanced. You can see the kind of crazy wobble um, that comes off when I push it a little. So after that, I took it somewhere with more space to try to get over the ground effects if that was causing any issues, but it had more or less the same problems. It had that crazy wobble anytime any real power was applied. And then what happened here is I burnt the motor, which is pretty sad. So that was kind of the end of that. So in conclusion, this weird wobble could be a number of things. Um, it's probably a combination of all of them. So obviously the way I made the propellers uh, caused some pretty nasty imbalances. Maybe not in the individual EDFs, but more across the four motors. Um, I tried turning down the PI gain super low, hoping that was the concern. Um, but I didn't really notice that helping anything. I think these imbalances are probably the cause of the motor burnout. Another consideration though is that the standard you know, three inch props are coming in around two grams. Um, mine are four grams, which is doubling the motor load, which looking back on it is probably another cause of that. So I think I'm gonna hold off further on any ducted quad iterations for now. 
uh, especially with this burn motor, I'd have to wait to get the motor anyway. Um, I want to focus more on single EDF systems, but this is something I definitely want to revisit and I want to take the lessons I learned here and hopefully apply them to make better EDFs for, for cooler projects going forward. Anyway, thank you guys for watching.